In last video, we discussed about how we can create a Docker. In other words, how we can download Docker and install on your computer and how we can uh, port our very first program into Docker. So I promised today I'm going to uh, show you how you can do real world example. I mean, create a real world application and deploy into the Docker. So I'm going to do that today. Uh, the only difference is, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a uh, Java based microservice and uh, deploy into Docker. If you uh, Google something like this, you may find multiple ways to do that. People may say, hey, go, ahead, go ahead and use this uh, Maven plugin like Spotify, they have a very nice plugin for Maven to create your web application, create a Docker from your web application. In other words, um, you can use a Gradle or you can use any plenty of uh, frameworks to do that. But I'm a person who more like on a basics because if you know the basics, uh, you're not going to down at all. At any environment, under any condition, you can work. Why? Because you exactly know how things work. But if you start to learn with the plugin, you don't know what's happening behind the scene, right? So you can uh, copy this plugin uh, from some code or some internet website to your project. And when you run it, yeah, it's working and it created a Docker image, but you don't know what's happening behind the scene. It's like you're getting fooled, right? Some people like that, some people don't. So I'm a person who love to basics. So I'm going to teach you basics. So last video, we learned how we can uh, port a program into a Docker using Docker file. I'm going to use the same concept today. Okay. So uh, in a previous video, we learned how to create uh, microservices using Spring Boot. Right. So today, I'm not going to explain everything. I'm just going to do that. So if you're missing something, if you don't understand how this works with the Spring Boot, go ahead and check that video. Uh, that will help you to understand this video. Today I'm going to just create the same uh, project. So uh, if you going to do with me, just start. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA and I'm going to create a new project. Uh, it's a Maven project. I'm going to create a Maven archetype. Um, quick start. Click next, group ID is com dot. Okay, so I got my project created. So you can see uh, it's a standard project. So I'm going to enable auto import so that would make my life easy. So this is my POM file. Okay, so now what we are going to do is just update this POM file to make its uh, standard uh, Spring Boot application, right? I explained this each tag in a previous video. So if you missed it, go ahead and watch that. Okay, so I set my parent project, right? So this is my uh, parent project. So then I'm going to use my dependencies. I don't need JUnit for this project. So first I'm going to remove that one. 
And to make this easy and fast, I'm just going to copy and paste the dependencies from our last project, right? So you remember last project we did to prove uh, how you can uh, deploy containerless application, uh, to how to create a containerless application. So I'm going to copy uh, my dependencies from that project. So why we use this dependency that's explained over there. So I'm going to get this, um, this dependency for Spring Boot, right? So we don't need to use the version here because version is already mentioned in uh, parent project. So Maven will use the same version. Right, so then I'm going to use uh, build section to rename my project. Right, so file name would be Spring Docker Demo. That's my project name, file, file name. So it will um, build as a jar because I mentioned as a jar in the packaging. And I'm going to use uh, May, uh, Maven Spring Boot plugin. I'm, uh, I'm going to use the Maven Spring Boot plugin to um, build this as a complete job with all dependencies, including Spring dependencies. Because otherwise, what happens is you will get only uh, this job file, but I need all uh, Spring dependencies in build with that. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So it looks like I'm good now. Okay. So we used uh, Maven um, uh, Spring Boot parent project and here we use uh, Spring Starter uh, dependency and we use build plugin. So now we go here and you know that I don't like this default application, default file. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, it's not allowed to delete because test is there. So just just delete the test first. Okay, so let's delete this man. Okay, All right. So I'm going to create my Java class. Okay, so this is application class, right? So I have a public static void main. And this is Spring Boot application, so I need to put the uh, annotation there. Okay, so that is done. Then Spring application dot run. So my class is application dot class, and I need to pass args. Okay, so I'm done with this class. So I need to create controller. For that, I'm going to create a package called controller. So I'm not going to create all the services class here. I'm just going to demo this. Uh, creating controller. So I'm going to create a method public string creating return I'm running on docker awesome huh okay so this is what I'm going to print uh, to make it uh, better so I'm going to make this with the uh, h1 tag so you can see this in little bigger that's just the fancy part okay so now i need to add here rest controller annotation and for this method i'm just going to add here uh, root element request mapping that's it so that's it what you all need to do just see with uh, whether we can run this program all 
Okay. So, no errors, localhost 8080. Oh, I am running on Docker. Awesome work. This is like, it is not on a Docker. So, now from application side, we are done. Right. So, now what we need to do is, this is what we did already. I just did it just to recap for you. So, now what we need to do is create this in, on, uh, on a Docker uh, or in other words to create a Docker image from this. So, in the last video, we learned how Docker works, right. So, uh, we can take a Docker image which already exists somewhere and then we can uh, use that Docker, alter that Docker image and put our program onto that Docker. So, for that last time we used Docker file. So, um, if you use a plugin, everything happened behind the scene. So, you do not have to worry of any of these, but what I am encouraging you to learn this basics in that case when you, you can use then whatever the plugin you want, right, to make life easy since you know the basics. But if you uh, do not know the basic, do not try to use the fancy tools because then you do not know anything. So, let us go and create a docker file. Um, I am going to create called docker file here. This name can be anything, I forgot to uh, mention that but you can you have to uh, pass this file if you, if it's a different right but in this case i'm using a standard file name so docker file right so i just created a docker file so last time we learned uh, we need to get the initial docker so it is i'm going to use java 8 right this can be uh, whatever your uh, java version and today we are going to learn new thing called expose. So, what it says expose local host uh, the current containers port 80 the, the uh, host port 8080 or whatever the port into uh, this docker image right. So, this container right expose port 8080. Now, we need to define entry point. So, entry point is simply says ok. Uh, what should execute within this docker. Okay, before define the entry point, we need to add our file. So, add, so we are here, the docker file is here, so the file should be in a target. So, that means add target and my file name. Okay, so my file name is this one right a spring took demo dot job right why it is job because it's defined here to uh, compile as a job and for now i'm just going to uh, deploy uh, copy this to same location so this what it says okay copy this file and add this file in this location in your container but since this is the example, I am just going to add in a root, but in your case, you can create your custom directories as we learned last video and add those. So, now entry point is we learned this type of command last time. So, my I need to execute Java and JA and this file name because it is in the root. So, it would be easy, right? So, that is it. Right, this is very simple. This is something exactly as what we learned last video, right? So, from Java 8, expose and add an entry point. Entry point is a new thing what we are learning. So, that says when you dip, uh, start this Docker, this is the thing you have to do, right? So, now close this, right? So, that is it. So, let us open a command from and move to this directory. So, now I have my pom file. So, I need to I first I am going to build this project. So, mvn clean install. So, first I had to build my project. So, build success. Now, we create docker. So, this is my target spring boot. 
this will take this name and create from this directory right this is something new again but you can find all those things in uh, docker documentation but unfortunately i missed the command docker build okay so now it's downloading uh, java you can see it's downloading java initial docker image and it's going to alter and add our spring project okay so now all about what i need to do is to run this docker right so let's see how to do that docker images so i have these uh, images spring boot docker so i'm going to run this so docker run minus p which means to export the port 8080 to 8080 spring boot docker so we'll see how it's working okay it ran right see last time it didn't work right so now if i refresh again so now it is working so now that means we did the breakthrough right so now we don't have our project so let's close my project i'm uh, i i can close this container and if i check uh, docker ps minus aq you can learn all those switches so this is my hash right so i can docker rm and this tag will remove my docker so now i don't have any dockers right so if i refresh again so it's not it's not working so if you don't trust me let me to close this right so now everything is closed so now I'm going to uh, run this docker again, right? Everything is clean. So again, uh, this is not working. Okay, so um, let's run the same command. Okay, it started. And if you go here, all right, it's working. So now we learn how we can uh, deploy our web services or our microservices into Docker. Now you can uh, spawn out any number of containers using uh, this same Docker image. You don't have to do anything. Every environment will be so, so identical uh, whenever you run this. If you have a Docker repository, you can push this to a repository. You have a 100 machine, you take this same image and run on a 100 machine, it would work in the same way. So now, uh, go ahead and do this in the same way I did, right? If yet you, if uh, so far you used to use a plugin, forget about those. Just try to learn the basic and do the same way I did. In that case, you know how it's work. Then after that, you can use any number of plugins. I'm also using a plugin in projects, not in a, this way. That's fine, no matter how you use, as long as you create Docker image. But when you close to basic, it's good. So now uh, that's it for today. So next video, I'm going to use Kubernetes or uh, I'm going to teach you how to orchestration works, right? How we can uh, automatically manage these dockers using uh, orchestration technology frameworks. Uh, till that, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget that. Go ahead and subscribe so you get yourself help and you help others to find this content. Then see you on the next video.